Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Oh, oh my gosh, Bree is calling me. Dude, it, I... You can't answer the phone. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. I'm Shelly, and this is Brian, and we're doing a study in Acts, Uh and we're in chapter 18. We're in Corinth. Still. (laughs) Paul was in Corinth for a long time, but Corinth, it surprises me sometimes when we're reading through Acts, Uh and, and I'll read like half of a chapter, and there's, it's good. It's all good. But then you'll hit like five verses that you've read a million times, and they say nothing and things explode in your brain mm-hmm. or or in our study it'll be like i never saw that before and so corinth has been kind of one of those places i've read first and second corinthians mm-hmm. um i've studied first and second corinthians i actually took a college course corinthian letters uh-huh. um but when i looked at corinth in acts all of a sudden it was like oh those are the people that Paul wrote the letter to. They needed those letters. Yes. He'd already left when he sent those letters back because uh-huh. his, he a year and a half was mm-hmm. not enough time to do everything to fix the Corinthian culture. Yeah. The culture and, was... We yeah. think America's bad right now. We're in 2024. I don't know when you're watching this. If, the, if you're watching it in 2050... I'm probably dead, but you know, right now with transgender and I, I don't even know. I don't keep track of what's going on, but our we think our culture's mm-hmm. bad. Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah. Read about Corinth. Corinth, but only if you're over eighteen. Yeah, Corinth is <laughs> Corinth is X rated. Corinth might be Y rated. Don't go to Corinth anyway. Um, but. That's where Paul and Paul and associates find themselves. Yes, they are, and the, and it become he recognizes that it's going to become a major hub of Christianity. Yes, because it and is a it major is, hub of everything. Yeah, else. it's a it's a it is a crossroads place, figuratively and literally. And Paul, Paul does not shy away from mm-hmm. a fight. And, and well, Corinth and one of the is a things fight. That's interesting. Corinth isn't the biggest city. No, it's not the oldest city. It is old. It is old. But Corinth is the economic and trade powerhouse of the Roman Empire. It is an extremely influential city. Well, and it is, like I said, it Mm -hmm. is the, for business, trade, and the means with which you produce money. Corinth is the Roman, it is the the business powerhouse, the economic powerhouse of the entire Roman Empire is Corinth. Everything passes through Corinth. And there's some interesting things to learn about Paul in in this section of of Acts. So we touched on it last time about him shaking the dust off of his Mm -hmm. clothes, the wrinkles, whatever, when he left the synagogue. Uh Uh-huh. it was a rejection of their rejection. Yeah. So sometimes when we're we've been ministering, we've been working, we've been sharing the gospel with somebody and they just don't want it. And then they just even become abusive with it. And um in the last few years, we've had some people that turned from the gospel and became kind of rude and abusive and and you, we have a tendency as people to then get, oh, they don't like me. And then we feel rejected. And we've been rejected so many times that we're just not going to try mm-hmm. anymore because we don't want any more rejection. And Paul just rejected their rejection. He's like, great, you guys, I've been fighting with you for how many years mm-hmm. to get you to see the Messiah came. Mm-hmm. He did all this stuff. And you're just rude and obnoxious and I've had enough. So I'm just going to move on to an audience Mm -hmm. that will listen. What a powerful lesson. Yeah. You know what? Move on to an audience that will listen. Now, that does not mean cut off 
those people. Oh no, because we see that continuing that well, ministry to that group of people. We continues. even see down in um, chapter doo -doo -doo. chapter or verse. Oh, I'm in verse nineteen. They arrive in Ephesus, and he himself went into the synagogue to reason with the Jews. Uh -huh. So he shook off well, the Corinthians. And in the but he doesn't. He's yeah, not the, like cutting the Jews off. Yeah, and later on, there's going to be people coming back to Corinth to reach out to the Jews. And yeah, we're going, to, we're going to follow some of that. So, so I'm not saying the cut those people out of your life. The naysayers just move on. Because they still need Jesus, okay? Yes. So just because Paul shook the dust off his clothes doesn't mean that he cut off the Jews. You give up on Jews. them completely, but what it is saying is, is, okay, you guys don't want to listen. I'm not going to keep doing this over and over again. I'm going to go someplace where they do want. Yeah, I, I'm going to you know. take, take this next door, but I... You know, we hadn't touched on that in the last yeah. one, but I wanted to I wanted to talk about that for a minute because in our cancel, cancel culture, we tend to want to take something that doesn't love us and just, okay, then you go over and be in your little world and don't, mm -hmm. I'm done. No, no, we don't ever get to be done. We just continue into a new place, but we can, we pray, we visit, we mm -hmm. share. But Paul changes his focus. Yeah. Least, uh, specifically in this community, and um, and that seems to have a, a very large effect on all of that, and it changes well, many, some of the events that are going to happen. It even says many Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. Mm -hmm. So he's he's got a following, mm -hmm. and again, sometimes we want to focus on what we don't get. Mm -hmm. He had a following. And it says, one, but this is interesting too. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent for I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. It would appear from those verses that Paul hit a moment of discouragement. Of course. And well, he, because Paul, God <laughs> isn't going to say, don't be afraid and keep on speaking if Paul is just going about Paul's being we Paul. Have, we, you know, we have your, your list of beatings and some of those, you know, <laughs> Paul, I mean, you know, Paul has been five, so, five places he's been ejected. Well, and one of those was so bad that they drug his body outside and left him for dead. They assumed they'd killed him. Oh, and Paul. he got up and goes, he's been in jail. He's been beaten. He's been, all of this has happened. Um, after a little while, there, there comes a point when you start going, hmm, I wonder if, uh, you know, he's taking this personal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, although one of the people that got saved was Crispus, and he was the synagogue leader. So somebody yes. was listening. Well, but that I, is a... But that, I like when Paul becomes a human. Uh-huh. Because sometimes we put Paul on a pedestal, mm -hmm. and he's like this super Christian guy that, you know, he doesn't wear a cape and tights, but nothing defeats him. And here we see a moment where it doesn't say Paul was defeated, because I don't think Luke would ever out Paul like that. Yeah. But obviously Paul got discouraged and God came in God's faithfulness and said, hey, come on. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I got you covered here. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to hurt you. Keep talking. I've got people. I mm -hmm. love having people. Well, and one of the interesting things, it lists it lists off some names of people in this. Mm -hmm. And some of them you go, well, why are they listening out? We've mentioned before that if Luke, who's our writer, our author, if he gives us a name, it probably was somebody who had significance at yeah. some point in that time where you could track up. On this one, because Corinth was such a notable Roman city um, or city in the Roman Empire, the people that it, there, there's a lot of history and things about that. All of these people that are listed here, these were people of significance. You can look them up. You can read about them. You can figure out what they did and what they did. And several of them were, they were powerful people. They mm -hmm. were government people. They were the leader of the synagogue. They were people who had not only 
you know, wealth or influence or whatever. These were people that had significance in the city and what they said carried weight. Yeah. And they were, they were, they were, first off, they were mostly Gentiles who Paul is now reaching out to and they're listening to his message and taking that side. And that's going to come into play here in a few verses. So, so God is, he's encouraged Paul in Uh a vision. And I think it says, no one's going to attack and harm you. So then the next, when we look at 12, oh my gosh, Bree is calling me, dude, it, I, you can't answer the phone. <laughs> no, it's usually on silent and my leg just vibrates a whole lot. Now, Brie you know is our sister. daughter. Hi, Brie. I just um, rejected Brie. Sorry, oh, no. hon. Um, I'll get back to her. But anyway, um, when we look at this, the, the where, next, where, were, oh, oh, so for 12. Man, that derailed me. While Galileo, it's not Galileo. It's Galileo, was proconsul of Achaia. The Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. Time out for just a second. Yeah. So Galileo is a notable, famous Roman person, and you can track him down. Yeah. And um, uh, and so that that first line of verse twelve, when Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, we because of Gallio's fame in the Romans, he's listed in history books. And so that gives us a date. That was 51 AD. And so that's, oh, this cool is, ta- know. Th- this is taking place in 51 AD. That's when he, when he was put in that position in, in Corinth. So that gives us a time frame. That gives us a time frame. Cool. So the, this man they charge is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. So here we go again. And I'm pretty sure Paul felt that way because when I read that, I'm like, here we go again. And there had to have been a moment when Paul was like, I'm, I'm just tired of this. But God had just told him, don't be afraid keep on speaking. Don't be silent. I'm with you. No one's going to attack and harm you. Now that was attack and harm because obviously they had grabbed him and they had taken him before the pro council and they had made an accusation prior to this, when they made their accusations, it was heard. And he got got beat, beat, arrested. They beat him. They beat his friends. They threw him in jail. They threw his friends in jail. Jason had to pay a fine. Somebody had to do something because Paul had preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. But here it says, um, just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, Galileo, I don't know, ancient Greek. If you Jews are making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not be judge of such things. So he drove them off. Now the crowd there beat somebody up. Yes. They <laughs> They were they 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 were just in the, a mood. They beat <clears throat> up the synagogue leader. Yeah, so they got to the, the <laughs> since, since they couldn't get Paul and they were upset. So apparently, we don't know why. So apparently, the synagogue leader was somehow mixed up in this, and either they beat him out of frustration because their their plot didn't work, or he said something in the middle of it. Anyway, he ends up taking a take, taking a, beating, a thrashing. They're beating their own people. Uh huh. But Gallio takes Paul's side, and one of the things that's mm-hmm. noted too. Again, we're going to say it one more time. Corinth is a big Corinth is a big place and a notable place. It is. The proconsul of Corinth is in the big leagues. This is not a this is no longer oh yeah this is somebody that is the mayor or the overseer of this distant province out in the edge of the Roman Empire. No, Corinth Gallio is uh amongst the leaders. Gallio is a that's why he's famous. He is a he is a, a person of note. He's also famous because of his brother. Y'all, let you figure 
Google it. Find out who his brother was. Anyway. Um, <laughs> you and Google. And so, uh, but it's there. And what we get from this, before Paul can even speak, Gallio addresses the crowd. And it's unique here because he shuts them down, yeah. for one thing. The, the implication, the implication is, is that Gallio believed Paul's message. Oh. The implication. Now, he can't, he can't say that because being a Christian or in this time a member of the way um, is against Roman law. It is mm -hmm. a punishable crime. So none of that is ever said, but he very definitely takes Paul's side. And the one thing that, you know, thing he says is, if you're, you're in front of a Roman judge and you're not discussing an issue of Roman law, you have a problem with Roman law, let's talk. If you don't, move along. Yeah. Is basically what Gallio says. And the, the, but the implication of that and what it did was it removed the stigma from Paul. Yes. It stopped him from being blocked. Had Corinth shut Paul down, most of his missionary journeys would not have, have happened. He would have been done. Mm -hmm. But because the proconsul of Corinth allowed him freedom to speak. Yeah. He was able to move through the rest of the region, and we get the rest of the book. So, um, but I, but still, they beat their own guy. They beat, they beat those Sothos, Jews. Sothos, Man, Sothos Jews. Please. Don't mess and, with the Jews. And the end line of that verse is kind of fun. They did it in front of the tribunal. So they attacked this guy <laughs> right there in front of all of this hearing. And it says, and Galileo paid no attention. He didn't care. He, Those, the, apparently the Jews were always rabble rousing. Perhaps. They, were, they must have rioted a lot. Well, we see them riot every uh -huh. city. They riot. And Paul couldn't have been the only yes. thing that stirred but them to a riot. Paul is safe. He doesn't have to hide. He mm -hmm. doesn't have to run in the middle of the night. Um, he's there. And the next verse is after this, Paul stayed many days longer. Yeah, he stayed for some time. He left the brothers and sisters, sailed for Syria, and he took Priscilla and Aquila with him. Yes. Which becomes a great partnership. Yes. So, so they... But before he sailed, this is uh -huh. kind of fun. It says before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at a place because of a vow he had taken. It doesn't tell us what the vow is, but the, nope. the guess is it was a Nazarite vow. And then the question arose, but the Nazarites weren't supposed to cut their hair. Remember Samson? Mm -hmm. And so I had to, I had to Google it to begin the Nazarite vow. You start with a clean shaved head. You start clean, you start over, mm -hmm. it's a new day. And maybe he was just shaking the dust of everything past off, mm -hmm. shaved his head, and now he's going to move forward. Well, this is one of the first times that we see that Paul <laughs> Paul leaves the town on his own time frame. <laughs> <laughs> True. He did not get Usually, kicked out. <laughs> if, if nothing else, he's kind of pushed along. And on this one, Paul leaves when he's good and ready to leave. He might have leave. even le left at midday with his suitcase. Hard Instead to say. of in the middle of the night under tarps in a boat. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, that so, is fun. So the party goes from there. And so uh, Aquila, Priscilla, um, and... Uh, they go to Ephesus. Well, they yeah, they catch a boat. They're on their way to Syria. They're on their way to mm -hmm. Antioch. But they get to Ephesus. He leaves Priscilla and Aquila. Uh -huh. So now they're going to plant a new church. They've learned a lot in Corinth. Remember, they weren't from Corinth. So leaving Corinth wouldn't have been a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to go plant the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And he's he he's Paul. Mm -hmm. He goes into the synagogue to yeah. reason with the Jews. Now, Aquila and Priscilla, we're going to see more about them later. Oh, they pop up all the time. They're going to be not notable people mm -hmm. um, for a while here. Um, we know... Nothing about Priscilla. 
uh, as far as where she came from, whatever. It does say, it, it, it tells us where Aquila was from, mm -hmm. and he's from a, the, a region of Asia Minor, uh, just north of Galatia, uh, right at the very bottom of the Black Sea. And uh, it's one of the parts of Asia Minor that Paul has not traveled through. He's always gone through a bit south of that. So it would be what would be modern Turkey, some of that area through there. Um, and uh, But in this section, he goes in to, to visit with the Jews. Uh -huh. And when they... When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined, but he left. He promised, I will come back if it is God's will. And then he sailed to Ephesus. So he actually found a synagogue of Jews that didn't hate him, didn't try uh -huh. to rabble rouse him. I think God right there, he's, he's doing some good things for Paul. Mm -hmm. He's encouraging Paul. Paul is back on track. And he starts traveling. He spends time in Antioch, and then he travels yeah, throughout now, the region of Galatia. It doesn't. And it doesn't ever tell us why he wanted to go to Syria. Why he wanted to go back to Antioch, although that is where he started. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't say why he wanted to go back there. Some theories say it had to do with whatever the vow was that he was taking. Uh, there may have been any number of other personal reasons that Paul wanted to get back to Antioch. But he's going, when he stops in Ephesus, he says, I'm, I'm on my way. I got to get someplace. I'll be back. Yep. And he travels on and uh, uh, he ends up in, he goes across. This time he doesn't go by land on the Roman road. He goes by boat out of yep. Corinth across the Mediterranean, ends up in Caesarea, which is there in Israel and uh, greeted the church there. And from there, it says he went down to Antioch, down realizing, realizing that Ge geographically, geographically he, he went, went down, down in elevation towards the yeah. you know north into Antioch. And he was there for some time. And the last little note of that is after some spending time there, he departed and went from one place to the next through the region of Galatia, Phrygia, strengthening disciples. So the places that he's been before, he, he goes visited. back through. He's not doing crusades in this case. He's going back through and strengthening the disciples. He's yep. talking to the people that, that... He's caring for his kids. Yes, he's doing that next step of discipleship as he's going back through, moving from place to place. Which is so important. Yeah. All right. Why don't you pray us out? Father, we just thank you that in our moment of need, you always meet us. When we're getting discouraged and tired, you send friends, you send help, you give us visions, you speak into us. And even with Paul, God, we see it right here that when Paul needed you, you were not far. That you opened doors, you paved ways. And we are so thankful for this part of Acts that shows us that even the superheroes get tired, but you give them rest. And so anyone that is listening to this podcast today, Father, I just pray that if they are tired, if they feel like they've had enough, their victory is coming. The beatings are over and the enemy is defeated and just give them strength and grace, joy, and rest today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Until see you next later. time. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.